The January 6th committee is releasing new evidence from their investigation. Just a few hours ago, the panel released 46 separate new transcripts of closed-door interviews with witnesses, among them several high-ranking officials from the Trump administration, Attorney General Bill Barr, White House Counsel Pat Cipollone, Secretary of Transportation Elaine Chao, also wife of Mitch McConnell, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and Trump's own daughter and senior advisor Ivanka Trump. This comes less than 24 hours after the committee dropped its final report on the January 6th attack. The key finding from their nearly 18-month investigation was clear, that without Donald Trump, the riot would not have happened. Let's bring in January 6th committee member and former constitutional law professor, Congressman Jamie Raskin. Congressman, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I can imagine you would love to call it a day after this week you've just had. An 845-page report. Huge. But the majority of Americans aren't going well, to read it. The bottom line, the bottom takeaway, is that what happened was really bad, and Donald Trump is to blame. How do you believe this man is held accountable for doing what he did? Well, as you know, we made a referral to the Department of Justice of uh, violations of four different criminal statutes, including interference with a federal proceeding, um, uh, conspiracy to defraud the U.S. government and the American people, uh, filing false statements with the government in the counterfeit electors uh, that were sent in, and then aiding and assisting and abetting and giving aid and comfort to insurrectionists. And we think we have comprehensive and overwhelming documentary proof of all of these charges, and we were, if anything, very conservative and very cautious in the charges that we advanced. So we uh, hope and trust that the executive branch of the government and the new special counsel, Jack Smith, will do their job and that it will not just be foot soldiers who are prosecuted and go to jail, but kingpins involved here and the central, uh, you know, the central mastermind of the whole attempt to overthrow the election and the government are held accountable. And then, as for the rest of us, we've got to make sure that we're fortifying democratic institutions against coups and electoral sabotage and insurrections and political violence in the future, and making sure that we're anchoring the right to vote and democratic control over government in all of our laws and institutions. So let's call your recommendations sort of the ideal scenario. If you and I were doing this, this interview one year from now tonight, what would be the scenario where you would say, yes, Donald Trump has faced real consequences. He's been held accountable. What would that look like? What do you want to see happen to him? Well, you know, there are hundreds of people who have already been prosecuted and convicted and gone to jail. Um, and, you know, we're going to have to leave it up to the prosecutors and leave it up to the courts to determine it. But I think that... Um, there needs to be a serious reckoning of individual accountability for the people who set all of these events into motion. Is there anybody in the country who believes that any of this would have happened absent Donald Trump's will? He was the one who got the groups to change uh, the date and the time of their permits from January 21st. They were going to protest after Joe Biden was inaugurated to January 6th. He was the one that galvanized the extreme right in the country to focus on the peaceful transfer of power as the target of their wrath and violence. He was the one who spread the big lie. He was the one who tried to get the legislatures to overturn the popular results, to try to get the state election officials to fabricate thousands of fake votes for Trump. Um, he was the one who tried to stage a mini coup at the Department of Justice and just get the DOJ to declare the election was corrupt and leave the rest to his Republican friends in the House. And finally, he was the one who decided to focus everybody's attention on Mike Pence uh, and then ultimately to say in the middle of the riot, he didn't have the courage to do what needed to be done, further inciting and exhorting the crowd, which was already chanting, hang Mike Pence and had, you know, set up a, a gallows in the crowd. So it's just impossible to think of any of this uh, happening without Donald Trump being the central instigator of the whole thing.
And if somebody's got a theory about why it was really Antifa that did it, then bring the evidence forward. But our bipartisan committee found no evidence of involvement by Antifa. So I don't know what the other theories are. This is not an Agatha Christie novel. We know exactly who done it. Um, you're obviously not going to tell us who, but in the last 24 hours since the report was released, have you privately heard from any of your Republican colleagues? Well, I think a lot of them are having uh, a quitter's remorse about what happened in the Senate uh, in the impeachment trial. And I told the Republicans I had the opportunity to speak to that they needed to vote to convict because the facts and the law compelled it, because the Constitution required it, and because the country needed it. But if nothing else, they had to do it to save their own party, because Donald Trump would come to destroy their party. And we are seeing that unfold right now, because Donald Trump has been exposed to the world um, as uh, the, the person who orchestrated all of these events to try to topple our constitutional order and seize the presidency. And yet he's now uh, completely ensconced in the Republican Party. And they're very afraid that if they don't nominate him, he will take 30 or 40 percent of the party with him. And that could be the end of the GOP, of Lincoln's party. And meantime, he's inspired uh, all kinds of students, like the guy who just uh, won uh, election from New York, Santos, whose entire resume is a complete tissue of fraud. Um, I mean, his entire identity is counterfeit. Uh, but that, of course, follows in the wake of Donald Trump and what he's done to Lincoln's party. Without a doubt. But does that in any way make you wonder if it was if his resume was put together with tissue paper? Why didn't his opponent blow his nose with it? Oh, well, that's a separate problem. Um, yeah, but I'd <laughs> like to know exactly what happened to the, you know, simple candidate opposition research. Um, but uh, I can assure you that will never happen again, especially with uh, all of Donald Trump's students taking over the Republican Party all over the country. I mean, these are people who are in it like Donald Trump uh, as a money-making proposition and may have nothing else available to them uh, in their lives and are deciding to try to use public office as an opportunity uh, for self-enrichment and uh, for, you know, business profit-making. This last question might be a stretch, but it's been on my mind for the last day. And I realize there's not an agency or a mechanism for this, but Cassidy Hutchinson took an extraordinary risk, a true patriot in testifying. When, you, when we read what she went through, it was like straight out of a mob movie. Does the committee or the government have any sort of protection or support for a person in her position right now? Well, the Congress of the United States does not have a witness protection program and similar functional equivalents, but clearly the FBI does, the Department of Justice does, there are other law enforcement agencies which do, and I don't know exactly um, what, you know, Cassidy Hutchinson is involved in now in terms of uh, her testifying and being a witness, but... I, I certainly hope that one way or another she's getting good security and good protection because uh, these people have run out of arguments. And at this point, uh, intimidation and coercion are all really that they seem to have left. But when they say that our investigation was one sided, I just tell them, yes, it was one sided. It was on the side of the truth and the facts. And we had uh, a bipartisan committee that was uh, committed to one thing, which is getting to the truth and the facts. If they've got some alternative theories about how it was really Antifa that did this and it wasn't Donald Trump, bring it on. We'd like to see it. But at this point, the vast majority of the witnesses were members of the Trump administration, the Trump White House or the Trump family. So if they say it was a partisan investigation, um, it does look like it was a Republican investigation, but there were some of his Democrats involved, too. So it was really a bipartisan investigation. Lastly, before we go, one of your recommendations, you would like to see a move to ban Donald Trump from being able to run and hold office again. 
Do you have any reason to believe when you hear Mitch McConnell's comments that, you know, Donald Trump has hurt the party, they need to distance themselves from him? Do you have any reason to believe that come a week or two from now, when we have a divided government, Republicans will actually agree with you and make real moves to, to, to stop Trump from running again? Well, they claim to be constitutional textualists and originalists, so they need to read Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which settles the whole subject. It says that anyone who has sworn an oath to uh, support the Constitution of the United States but violates that oath by engaging in insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution may never hold office again at the federal level, at the state level, military or civilian. That's a constitutional principle. If they want to change the Constitution, they should move to amend the Constitution and get a two-thirds vote in the House and the Senate and go out to three-quarters of the states. But right now, that's the law we're dealing with. It's not a, a question of what the January 6th committee wants. That's what our Constitution says. So either we're going to be faithful to the Constitution or we're not. We believe that that is a self-actualizing, self-executing principle that the courts have to follow. But we do recommend that Congress undertake action to set up a judicial mechanism um, that would allow the Department of Justice and private parties to go to court in the District of Columbia, U.S. District Court in D.C., in order to get declaratory and injunctive relief, saying that somebody was an insurrectionist. But um, some courts have already said they can just do it. They don't need to wait for congressional action. And, of course, Congress has already determined bicamerally, in a bipartisan way, that Donald Trump incited insurrection against the union. And even in the Senate, there were 57 votes out of 100 for that proposition, and he was impeached for it on the House side. So we could say it already exists as a legislative fact in the country that Donald Trump incited insurrection. All right. Then, Congressman, before we go, People across this country are about to walk into Christmas dinners. They are going to be talking to their family members about this report, most of whom won't have read it. What's the one message you want people to take away? This report taught us X. This report uh, taught us that we have to watch people who get into power, which is a basic lesson of the framers of the Constitution. Um, the rule of law is all about controlling people who take public office and political power, because some of them will have runaway ambition and they will attempt to do everything, including inciting violent mobs against us, in order never to leave power. So that's the oldest story in the book. If you want to make democracy work, you yourself have got to get involved and you've got to stand up for the principles of the Constitution and for democratic freedom. Hence the phrase, informed and active citizenry. About an hour ago, I said, what does that mean? You just gave us the answer. Congressman Jamie Raskin, thank you so much for joining us. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Stephanie. Happy holidays.